Let me show you something cool. We have here a GraphQL query that we've just written out in a string. That is then being passed to an Urkel client, basically a just a GraphQL client that calls basically calls an API with this query, and the thing that we get back is fully typed. If we remove something from this query, let's say the name here, then it errors in TypeScript at the speed of TypeScript instantly. Something extremely cool is happening here, and I'm going to tell you what it is. This is happening because of a brand new library called GQL.tada, which is a magical GraphQL query engine for TypeScript. It is one of several attempts over the years to basically make TypeScript work with GraphQL. There is a very popular one called GraphQL CodeGen, which generates TypeScript code from your GraphQL schema. And another one that I actually use, which almost no one uses, which is GenQL, which does something very similar. But these libraries both have their problems, and I think GQL.tada solves them. Let's first of all show you exactly what's happening here. So if we go into package.json, I have two uh, dependencies here that you should pay attention to. The first one is GQL.tada down here. And this other one is at oh no no co GraphQL SP. Let me tell you what these are. GraphQL SP is really interesting. It's a GraphQL language server that basically sits inside your TS config as a plugin here. And what it's doing is it's watching a schema.graphql file, which we have just here. The schema.graphql file I have, you know, post, query, create user input, create post input. And what it's doing is it's watching for changes in this GraphQL file, basically in the background inside your VS code. I don't need to run a CLI for this. And so it's just watching this screamer.graphql and then it's outputting a location or outputting a file here to source graphqlenv.d.ts. Let's take a look at that. This then is basically a massive file with what's called an introspection, introspection query into the type that then gets passed to gql.tada. So it's basically passed in via a global uh, declaration here, a declaration merge. And it's called an interface setup schema. This is all done for you. And basically this will just change whenever your schema changes and that then feeds into gql.tada. So what is gql.tada doing? Well, if we then go back to our index.ts file, I import this GraphQL function from gql.tada. And what this does is absolutely crazy. It takes this input string, it passes the input string, and basically like does a string transpilation on it. If I can, can I dive into here? Yeah, here we go. Okay, we've got some crazy TypeScript code already coming in. Oh my god, so many JS doc comments as well. There is some crazy, crazy stuff in here that basically just takes this string and understands from this single string what type you are tr expecting back from this query. So we have a tada document node here with user's name ID. If I remove ID, then it gets removed from the query instantly. Not only that, but because of the language server plugin, then I actually get autocomplete on all of this stuff too. So I get an email, password, posts. You can tell how excited I am here. So posts here, and then I go inside here. If I misspell something like this, then I actually get an error down here. And because it's absolutely instant, then I get errors where I expect them. So if we look at this res down here, we can see we have users, posts, all of this stuff that we're expecting. If I remove title down here, then it's just basically an empty object. I remove posts, then posts no longer exists. It is instant. The other thing that makes me excited about this is that the team behind this are really prioritizing performance. Because you might think, oh wow, that sounds like a lot of work for the TypeScript compiler to do. Well, it depends really on how you structure your types. Honestly, like passing strings is something that TypeScript is pretty quick at. Comparing objects, not so much, but passing strings, it's actually fairly fast. And what they're doing is they have a really, really solid test infrastructure for making sure that their stuff is running really quickly. There's this amazing tweet from Phil, who's one of the authors, basically saying, Yep, it can take a long time to type check. Oh, no, we actually just shipped a fix. And instead of taking eight seconds to type check a massive file, it only takes 40 milliseconds. In other words, you don't need to rewrite TypeScript in Rust in order to make it fast. It's often the library maintainer's job to make sure their code is fast. And this attitude of working in public, making sure that your stuff is as fast as possible, we've seen that before in things like Bun, and that can lead to some really impressive gains. So there we go, gql.tada. I'm really excited to see the future of this library 
see how adoption goes and I really encourage you to try it out. It is incredibly cool. I've been Matt Pocock. You can find all my stuff on TurtleTimeScript.com. There will be a floating face somewhere. There will be a, another video that you can watch as well. I've got tons and tons of YouTube shorts that I've been putting out recently and I'm writing a TypeScript book which should be out sometime this year which is open source on my GitHub too. So if you go and find that, that would be cool. I'll add a link to that below. But anyway, I will see you very soon.